Hey, Foot Clan, we got a great show for you today. We're counting down the running backs, our early rankings before the draft. You don't want to miss a minute. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh! Welcome in. Andy, Mike, and Jason. The Fantasy Footballers. Back with you Tuesday, April 11th. I was pretty worried about that introduction. Why? I... Thought I was losing the voice this morning. Oh, and I haven't. I hadn't really yes. tested it out. You were raspy. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm raspy right now a little bit. Yeah, I can hear it a little bit. You're, but you're at ninety percent. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why. It went great. But uh, you know, got through the Easter weekend. Hopefully, everybody had a good time. Enjoyed their families. Weather out here has been pretty nice. It's getting hot though. Yeah, we are. We've getting already, warm. It's gonna be we're like, already getting a little little snack, a little taste of that heat. Kids jumping in the pool with it when it's sixty eight degrees. Yeah, my my son's swimming today. Yeah, it, it it's too cold for me. Well, yeah, we're we're grown ups. We have sensibilities <laughs> and sensitive skin. <laughs> okay, it, it is weird. Why does that happen? We I don't know. We like to be comfortable. The older we get, maybe that's it. Yes, I refuse any un- level of uncomfort. Yeah, I think like when you're a child, the fun of the playing in the pool supersedes the coldness. Right. And therefore they they do it. And then we do That's a good point. I don't think we have as much fun in the in pool, the pool yeah. anymore. That's the real issue. My my enjoyment from a pool only comes from cooling down now. That's that's why I get in a pool is to cool down. Yeah, what are your normal pool activities when you I was going to ask, pool? like, how I do mean, you... This, you're not... It's basketball hoop. Basketball like, hoop? Other than a basketball hoop, though, how does one have fun... Floating. ...in a pool? Floating on things <laughs> with a drink. A diving board. Oh, and you're a, not... Okay. You're going and out and hitting the diving board? <laughs> oh, heck yeah. Really? How oh, that di- is... What's your one... dives per year right now, stat number? I probably, I would say, 35. 35 dives? Yeah. Now, we're not just cannonballs, an actual dive. Yeah. Yeah, any kind of any kind of dive. Head first dive. Head first dive, probably twenty four point nine. Okay. And uh how, how clean are those? It. What are the splash what's the splash like? Well look, I'm a larger <laughs> fellow, so there's there's some splash, but I would say that you would be impressed by my dives. Yeah, your dives are okay. Yeah. By yeah. the splash or lack of splash? By the lack of splash. Okay. Just making sure we're all on the same page. My dives per year are at zero. Yes. I don't know how to dive without getting three gallons of water in both of my ears. <laughs> what? Dude, it, I thought you were going to say nostrils. So. No, no. It was these, these big old ears. They're, they're, what, they siphon the water? Yes. There's some something to do with the shape, and my Dumbo ears just like, when I dive in, it goes scoop, 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 scoop. <laughs> so do you just <laughs> not go underwater? No, I don't dive head first. Oh, okay. So it's about being upside down and underwater. Go, sh- as you enter the water. Okay. I, I can I jump in. I've never heard of the ear problem. Oh, this is a big problem. <laughs> big problem. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Well, I mean, you do got a big head, big ears. That makes and sense. this wasn't a problem as a kid. It's now I'm, yeah. well, now I'm old and my head is gigantic. What are we doing today? We're talking early, early rankings. Our pre-draft running back countdown starting at number 20, going to 11. This is before... We get into the weeds, right? And we're going to, you know, our ultimate draft kit, you can find it at ultimatedraftkit.com. When we dig in there, we are looking at full player projections for every relevant fantasy football player across all positions. And we're, you know, we're projecting out numbers and we're projecting out, you know, the deep and, and we're surprised by them sometimes because mm-hmm. we're going numbers first. Today, we're, we're kind of, it's a lay of the land, right? Yep. Yep, I'm very excited to walk through these and go, oh, you know what? I'm too high on this guy. Oh, I'm too low on this guy. So we're uh, we're going to go 20 all the way down to one over the next two shows at the running back position. Got some NFL news to talk about as well. I can uh, remind everybody, Twitter at the FF Ballers if you want to follow the show. 
You can follow me at Andy Holloway, Jason at Jason FFL, Mike at FF Hitman. And we're on all the other social media channels as well, Instagram, TikTok. And you can watch it, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. We'll have another Dynasty show dropping tomorrow. Yes, we will. Shout out to everybody who tuned in to episode one of the Dynasty podcast. Yes, it was thank a, you so much. It was an awesome deep dive at the running back position. And uh, so tomorrow, I believe, wide receivers. That's correct. Yeah, the rookie wide receivers jumping in there. And there was uh, the first episode of the season for the DFS and betting podcast was also out there. So if any of y'all like getting, you know, getting frisky with some futures, especially on the NFL draft, that's a show for you. All right. And like I said, the Ultimate Draft Kit, ultimatedraftkit.com. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Well, I didn't see this coming. I did not see this coming either. Jason? Yeah, no, I, I wouldn't have imagined it, it would come in this order. But yes, what is the news? The Ravens have agreed to a one-year deal with Odell Beckham Jr. It's, uh, it's going to be worth at least $15 million. That's a lot of quiche. Uh, when you think about the kinds of deals that, for instance, Juju Smith-Schuster has signed over the last couple of years, this one is kind of is wild. It's kind of wild. Hey, Odell Beckham and I don't. I think it was Mike Clay who tweeted it, but I mean he hasn't had more than six touchdowns in a season since 2016. So you're you're going at you know seven years now. I know we all have the catch imprinted onto our brain. We know what he was, but I don't think. The Beckham we saw in Los Angeles was vintage not Odell a, Beckham. Not a fifteen it was million still, dollar man. Yeah, it was still good, but it wasn't fifteen million dollars. And well, then, well, now he's got a, a new knee injury from that version that we saw. So. Right, he has another ACL tear since then. And then, you know, Lamar Jackson was supposedly, according to Ian Rappaport, actively recruiting Odell. What does it mean? I mean, you have to imagine Lamar Jackson is going to be back in Baltimore at this point, or he is ultimate, ultimate trolling Odell Beckham. <laughs> it's it's crazy because you have to imagine this is exactly the situation that Beckham was looking at in New York, which was the quarterback has requested you come pay Beckham because there was a lot of rumors he'd go to New York. He was actually going to visit New York, I think, a day after he signed this contract. And then now you have another quarterback that un undoubtedly told the organization, go get me Odell Beckham Jr. And they said, we will pay him more than we should. Yeah. So it's hopefully the conclusion of the Lamar Jackson drama is coming to an end. It kind of felt like if, if something was going to happen, it would happen by the draft. Like if the trade scenario pops up, you know, a lot of whispers of the Colts. If they're if the quarterback they want is not there at four, maybe they trade for Lamar Jackson. And look, there's just there are keeper leagues out there that need to know what is happening no. with Lamar Jackson. Okay, this is Mike out no out there out there out there. Let let me say this by the draft, Lamar, <laughs> not the worst place Beckham could have landed, assuming Lamar's back. Also, this team had talked about two wide receivers in the draft. I mean, they, they had discussed maybe taking two high-profile wideouts. I will say this for the second time this offseason. Go trade Rashad Bateman. Nobody agreed with me the first time. Maybe it's stupid. I still think they spend a high draft capital pick on a wide receiver. I think Beckham and the new wide receiver and Mark Andrews are going to be potentially higher in the pecking order than Rashad Bateman. I think Bateman is a player that will make plays this year and maybe maybe this is just uh misdirection and i'm a fool but P possible it's i mean th i guess a question needs to be asked because he did not play last year and we kind of highlighted when's the last time you really saw good or not good but elite odell beckham jr this a long time ago and it, does odell beckham really make a difference like if if they even if they take a first wide first round wide receiver and you have rashad bateman can Beckham hang with those guys? I don't know. He has to for this money. Well, yeah, uh, <laughs> the, the no. Ravens are betting on it, but he doesn't have to do. He doesn't have to do anything. Allen Robinson says, "No, yes. you don't. You could get paid <laughs> and just still be the oldest version of yourself you've ever been." Odell Beckham is not going to be something special 
that he wasn't over the last several years and now coming off of a year and a half from, you know, removed from playing football two ACL surgeries in a few years as an older player, not like a young, you know, it's very different when a 20 year old is getting an ACL surgery than when a 30 year old is getting an ACL surgery. So I, I don't think this, the, the fact that he got this money is because he's Odell Beckham. He's got the name and you hope it's in con you know, it, it's it's conjoined in to the, yeah, in conjunction <laughs> with the fact that Lamar would be coming back. That's the hope is that Lamar asked for him. They're going to sign him. Now let's come back and let's play Lamar and and hopefully that happens. It but it speaks to like in a redraft league, I'd rather have Beckham than Bateman. I would not a hundred percent because he, he requested Odell Beckham to be there. The you know we've seen Lamar Jackson for his entire career throw to his favorite players. Over and over and over and over again. It was Hollywood Brown. It's Mark Andrews. If he if he asks for Odell Beckham to come in there and he's active on the field, that's my personal opinion. I'd much rather have him than Bateman because Bateman was not a volume play, anyways. So you're gonna you're gonna be betting over like Beckham will catch more passes than I, Bateman will. I, I would think that Beckham might have more targets, yes, but far fewer fantasy points. I I don't believe that Beckham has all of a sudden gained youth that no other NFL player has been able to do in their 30s. He'll gain targets. Yeah, but can he do anything with it? Yeah, I think he'll be fine. Okay. I don't think I, he's going to be – I don't. I'm not, I'm not saying he's – this offense, the passing offense, a wide receiver, I mean, where was Bateman in your in your uh, redraft rankings going to be? Oh, that's Even without totally. Beckham there, where was, was Bateman going to be in your top 24? No. No, probably just outside of that. So, no. I mean, in that situation, it muddies the water for Bateman, no matter yes. what. Yeah, but the – Bateman is still interesting of you saw a tiny little bit of his talent for the beginning of the year, and then he was hurt. And Odell Beckham, looking at the kind of the fantasy downfall, you know, back the two years in Cleveland, he was averaging this in a half point, just over 10 fantasy points a game. That's fine. And then in 2021 with the Rams, it was 7.6. So, I mean, it's it, it, it it's been a downturn of we haven't seen – Truly top tier Odo Beckham for quite some time. The Chiefs agreed to a one year deal with wide receiver Richie James from the Giants. Richie James was pretty good last year. Uh, 57 catches, 569 yards, four touchdowns with the Giants. It's not a meaningless deal for Patrick Mahomes, but it's also a one year deal for the Chiefs. They lost a couple pieces. Yeah. No juju. Is I it, think Richie James is just part of the puzzle it's interesting right now as you wait for the draft if you, if you move through the draft and they don't spend a uh, round one through three pick on a wide receiver then it becomes far more interesting the Dolphins uh, did we talk about Tyreek Hill's retirement plan no we haven't I just looked back at the dates this this came out Thursday morning after we'd recorded already okay we talked about it somewhere maybe foot it was cast. a footcast but uh, you know Tyreek Hill came out said he plans to retire after the 2025 season That'll make it 10 seasons in the league for Tyreek. He's ready to play two more years and become a gamer. Oh, is that really yeah. the plan? Mm -hmm. No, he wants to be huge in the gaming space. Yeah, he's assembling a team and uh, hiring people, and he, he wants to uh, you know be the head of a new gamer group. But uh, this is this doesn't change that much for me. Obviously, you don't get the late stages of a career downturning spot start opportunities. But this was basically, I think, what you would see Tyree Kill, you know, what you're excited about. If you were to trade for Tyree Kill last year, it's for these next three years. And now you've got the final two years left on that contract where I expect him to still be elite. After that, I mean, sure, I'd, I'd rather have him than have him retire. But it doesn't – it hasn't changed his value drastically to me like in a dynasty league. Yeah, I mean, you're expiring. It it's a tough it one because, like, if you if because what you said in your argument was that you got him for three elite years. So if he's elite in year three of that deal, right before he retires, then you were going to get production in dynasty for another year or two. You don't go from elite to nothing. So it, it's a little disappointing. It also might mean, in your case, Jason, it's a buying opportunity where you know if you're only planning on those two years anyways, you can kind of throw that in the face of the Tyreek manager and say. Look, I'll I'll offer you this maybe lesser than asset. I don't know what tier that would be that they'd accept. But 
it's rare when we get an expiration date printed for us for a dynasty league. Yeah, you know when he's going to retire, and I, I expect him to follow through on this. Obviously, players have been known to change their mind um, in the yeah, past. Yeah, when dollars, like a $15 million contract from Baltimore, comes your way. Yeah, or when you think your career's over. Two years from now, when his gaming group hasn't gotten off the ground, he's like, huh, okay, <laughs> football works better for me. I will say this about the Beckham thing, circling back for a second, but he was, he's was he been recruited now for almost a year. Like You remember the, the talk yep. about Beckham was coming back and then participating in the playoffs for a team last year. It was actually coming back before the playoffs. Then it was like, oh, no, we'll come back just for the playoffs. So at least time removed from injury is going to be very significant. So if for some reason the Ravens saw – Saw that in the workout tapes. Maybe there's more optimism. Uh, Robert Sala said, Brees Hall looks fantastic. Yeah, he does. He's a gorgeous man. <laughs> Expected to be back for week one. Beautiful body. And, you know, that's a good report. We we certainly don't know if we'll have, you know, last season's Brees Hall instantly when the season begins. But a report in April and an expectation to be ready – means maybe we don't have that long to wait. Yeah, you've got a, a later season injury, so the normal expectation would he be better the second half of the season than the first half of the season. He would be better in 2024 than he will be in 2023. That doesn't mean he will be bad in 2023. It was week seven. And there are also examples. So, you know, we've, we've talked about this a little bit. There was a great um, article research done by Matthew Betts on rookie running backs and, and coming back from, or not rookie running backs, but running backs coming back from ACL injuries. And there are a few examples of very young elite backs who have had an ACL surgery. Todd Gurley in college, Jamal Charles early into his career. And those guys the next season were outstanding uh, so there are there are examples when they are very young. Brees Hall still twenty one years old uh, that can can bounce back quick, and so it's it's nice to hear the head coach say he's looking great. Let me let me ask you this: Would you read into their draft maneuvering at running back? You know, if they do nothing at the position, is oh, that yeah. a that's a kind of a subtle way of saying like he's just going to be our guy from day one? There's no way to give more confidence in Brees Hall than to say we don't need a running back added to this roster. Cardinals quarterback Kyler Murray cleared to resume workouts 13 weeks removed from surgery. There, there was an Instagram post he shared. He was doing squats uh, on the ACL knee. It was good to see. I mean, he, he looked like he was getting better as fast as possible. Still unlikely to return to 100% until later in the year. There had been doctors that had come out in the beginning and said they didn't think he'd play this whole year. There had been rumors of the Cardinals trading for Mac Jones to play this season. Gross. I mean, uh, they, what? Yeah, is there is that leaked from the Patriots? Yeah, it was worked had into a, a a bigger like Mac Jones and a three for Hopkins type of discussions, um, which I'm fine with. Interesting, but yeah. but I think I think Kyler's going to be back sooner than later. I do. They just yeah. don't like Mac Jones, do they? Uh, again, a younger athlete coming back from that surgery is going to be better. Um, Kyler could get back quicker. I truly believe that the the likelihood of him being there for Week One or maybe starting the season on the pup. I feel like a lot of it comes down to the fact that the Cardinals aren't gonna be good they project to have the highest odds for that number one pick right now they you know why rush back a franchise quarterback when this already seems like a lost season for the Arizona Cardinals you I yeah I mean I I think it comes down to Kyler if Kyler Murray wants to play football and he's healthy enough to play football I think he's gonna say a lot I think it's gonna be a lot you know let's say Hopkins doesn't depart I mean I think it, it I think it'll come down to him saying I want to be back on the field which Look, the history of Kyler Murray is that he takes as much time as possible. I mean, he nobody avoids getting tackled. And that's the irony of the injury in a way because Kyler Murray is the kind of the king of sliding and avoid and going down early and not being hit and then the injury happens in the open field with no one around you. Yeah, it's like I'll get you no matter what you do. <laughs> I just think final it, destination. Yeah, it's it's that age-old thing where like we see the season one way, but a brand new head coach and a brand new general manager. Well, we've heard how the Arizona Cardinal coach sees things. It's like, <laughs> 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 
It's all in sound effects. I w- I didn't fo- <laughs> I didn't follow you for a second. Shots, shots, <laughs> shoot, shoot. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Weirdo. Let's, let's, we'll see. Uh, hey, guess what? Joe Mixon. I... He is being recharged with aggravated menacing going back to his yeah. January incident. Was very concerned about it. Uh, set to appear in court on April 19th. It's a first degree misdemeanor. Which it, it is really... the highest, according to where this is being booked, it's the highest degree of a misdemeanor. It could include up to six months jail time. I don't. Uh, it won't. It's, it won't. This is Joe Mixon. That being said, when they dropped the case right after this was first released, uh, knowing that they might be able to recharge him, they did come out and say that new evidence has emerged. So if you have decided to um, recharge Joe Mixon on the basis of evidence it it's not a great position for joe mixon to be in we discussed earlier this offseason um the executive vice president of, of business operations for the Bengals. they seemed very concerned with his off the field issues and needed that to play out the fact that he's being recharged here uh with a court date coming up right before the nfl draft you they're, gotta, they're drafting the, yes the the, the, the Bengals are drafting a running back and it, whether it's one of your favorites, Charbonnet oh, man, seems to jump out. Yes, please. Um, but I mean, it could be it could be a third round running back. I don't think it's going to be one of the undersized guys. I think it's going to be somebody to come in. I mean, they lost P. Ryan. I doubt Jason. You've got a lot of mixing in your best ball leagues. I don't believe I have a single share yet. Yeah, I, because nobody knows where he's at. He's not on this show today, which means he's not in our top twenty. Certainly not on the next show. It's uh, it's a wait and see. There's if just, you have Mixon and Dynasty, you feel like you just got, you know, a player deleted potentially. It, there's just, it, like for for the Cincinnati Bengals, how many of these things can you stomach? Because it feels there's just they keep happening with Joe Mixon, and, and they already took the huge chance on him. And I'm not saying necessarily him being the center of the story, but things around him and and the people that he's hanging out with like and he already came into the league with a really bad track record in college it, was he suspended a year i don't remember yeah. uh, for the uh, like when he when he hit that lady or i, I give a strike i can't remember exactly what oh, happened he, yeah he he punched her i believe yeah. he knocked her like out. and it was awful and so the Bengals already like went out on the limb to say okay we're going to bring mixon in and See if we can move past these types of things, but then stuff just keeps happening. So it's like how, and he's overpaid a little bit for his position. So can the team really keep moving forward with him? Twelve million dollar cap hit if he plays this year. Is that right? And then a dead cap of five point five. So you know, if he doesn't, if for some reason he plays this year, he's not playing with them next year, right? Because that'll be a, I mean, a very small dead cap. And thirteen million. They're not paying him thirteen million next year. With you know, there's there's rumors right now, and I don't want to like get too far out ahead because I don't know what's going to happen. But right. like, there have been quite a few T Higgins extension rumors um, circling right now, and and that look at the math checks out. What do you want to do? You want to keep mixing for another year, or you want to re-sign your young, talented yes. player that makes Joe Burrow investment, the investment you're going to make on him valuable right like Bengals well, don't do what the cowboys did sign your wide receivers let your yeah, running backs yeah. go football wise it's a it's a no-brainer you and, pick t higgins you know just kind of hearkening back to our rookie discussion about i know we like you know you like zach charbonnet Bijan, obviously and you've got the smaller guys in gibbs and a chain it will be interesting because you you go beyond that a couple of the larger guys like kendry miller I mean, could he, like Roshan yeah, or, out of or, Texas is like gaining steam among uh, on the at least on draft Twitter. It's just like if those players are the ones that that fall to Cincinnati in the third or fourth round, and they have every opportunity to to be the guy early on. That is, you know, you're gonna have another pick in that early dynasty rookie draft that all of a sudden changes the landscape. I mean, if Charbonnet goes to a timeshare situation or drops a little farther. Or one of those guys goes to Cincinnati, you're going to be staring down the Jonathan Taylor versus Clyde Edwards-Alaire decision people had a few years ago where 
look, everybody liked the talent of Jonathan Taylor more. You guys did. Yep. But, Mike, you took Clyde because of the situation. Yep. Yeah. I think Cincinnati is probably the best landing spot for any high draft capital rookie. Uh, that being said, they're also still uh, associated with Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah. It, it might be you know a, a veteran, but they will most likely bring some other running back in to replace Joe Mixon. And I would say just real quick for, for our dynasty people, uh, Travion Williams of the Cincinnati Bengals. Again, this is this is dynasty nasty boy stuff. But there are leagues that he is – like I scooped him up off of waivers I think three weeks ago or something. He's on the roster. Like he has he has a, a one year deal and even if even if it's Mixon's on the team, like he could be involved way way more than you think. So he should be picked up and stashed should he be around on your waiver wire. Monster collegiate production from Travion. Yes. All right, let's take a quick break and we'll be back with those running back rankings. I was trying to remember who you brought, Travion. Why you brought Travion Williams' name up on the Dynasty Show? Who was Be because he who is, is around a chain because Travion was Texas A and M. That's right. Undersized, out of control production, fell to the sixth round in the NFL draft, and people are buzzing about a chain right now. But it's is it it's a very similar situation. But of course, if a chain gets draft capital, that's much different. <laughs> Running backs. All right, doing it a little different this year, doing a running back rankings countdown. Today's show, we'll go from 20 to 11, and then you'll have to come back on Thursday and get our top 10 countdown of the running back position. This is uh, this is a kind of a overview of these players. They're not meant to be deep dives. The draft's going to say a lot about these rankings, camp, Free agency, if Zeke lands somewhere. Right. Those type of things. Bijan is not included. No. Just, by the way, rook rookies are not factored in here. So we're going to talk about range of outcomes for some of these players. And at number 20, it almost feels like uh, like a betrayal of sorts to to speak this name at number 20. <sighs> he kind of betrayed us last year. But like. Alvin Kamara comes in at 20. His best ball ADP is much worse than that at RB33. I mean, the guy was – he missed two games last year and he was the running back 18. Yeah, it's just, a you know, years of elite production. Yes. And so you're adjusting to a new normal for Alvin Kamara. You got a new quarterback. You got a, a legal situation that's going to almost assuredly include some form of suspension. Trial date for battery charges is July, late July, which is uh, during training camp. So – Questions. There's a lot of questions surrounding Alvin Kamara more than ever in his career. And they signed Jamal Williams to a three year deal. So you know, do we do we have an upside case at all for Alvin Kamara? Well, it, it this is sometimes fantasy football is a little bit easier than we make it. it guys as they age, they get worse, not better. This is a player who got less efficient last year. Uh, the last two seasons, he's had his most opportunities in his career, both seasons over 300 total opportunities, which he was always an efficiency, uh, fewer touches, but extremely explosive, a lot of touchdowns. And the touchdowns have kind of gone away as this offense went from Drew Brees and a high-powered, high-scoring machine, Sean Payton-led uh, structure to now uh, they know they've got a superstar you know, from the last several years in Alvin Kamara, so let's just give him the ball a lot, but it's just not as good an offense. It's not going to be as efficient, and he's not getting better going forward. You add in the question marks of the legal trouble, and I think about running back 20 is where he belongs. Like Mike said, he pretty much played the whole season last year and was about the running back 20. So if you assume, okay, there's a sp suspension coming, he's going to miss, call it three games, this is probably about where he should be. That being said, I would expect the Saints to be a better offense this next year than they were last year as a whole. So scoring opportunities should be up with Derek Carr, with hopefully you you presume that the wide receiver core won't be completely decimated uh, due to injury as it was through last season. Uh, so I, I think this is a, where he belongs. I'm curious if the addition of Jamal Williams, they move 
uh, they moved Kamara back to what he was, the, the, like three years ago, like where you know up until 2021 he didn't he never saw over 200 carries on the ground, kind of got close, but you know 2019 171 attempts, 2020 187, then he skyrockets to 240 the next year, and he had 223 this past season, and the targets went down. I wonder if the addition of Jamal Williams, who, yeah, Jamal Williams, he can be a good pass catcher, but he's also just a sturdier guy. He's more of a hammer. So I wonder if they bring him in and you have a split more in line of the Mark Ingram years where he yeah, catch where, passes. Where, where Kamara can be back in the range where he's getting nearly 100 targets because he has not been close the last two years. Yeah, yeah. And, and not to linger too long, but I mean, it's, it's just one of those things where Kamara was better with less opportunities. You know, he had he had the Breeze offense, and yes, the touchdowns were there, but... We call that the Lamar Miller. Yeah, I, it's just one of those things where I think he's going to be a really hard player to pull the trigger on in drafts with the suspension. Very. Because you don't know how good it's going to be when he comes back. It's not like a suspension for a, a player that is locked and loaded, like middle peak Kamara years with Breeze. It's going to be like, I'm going to invest a pick and I'm going to invest a bench spot because I can't put him on IR just so that I get what an RB two to three. Yeah, exactly. That that's the issue because even if his pass catching goes up with Jamal Williams there to put him back in that role, Jamal Williams is going to take the goal line opportunity and those will go down. He only had four carries inside the five yard line last season. Did Kamara? You know, you go back. Well, he's superstar Taysom Hill. <laughs> yeah. Um. So you you don't expect a lot of touchdowns there. And if you're talking about, okay, he's the running back 17 on a points per game basis to wait on that, it's just not worth it. It's not a it's not like you're drafting a locked in top three back. Jacalyn Williams. Sorry, oh. Jacalyn Dobbins. That's <laughs> where we were moving to. Gotcha. Uh JK Dobbins at nineteen, twenty four years old, contract year. I don't know how to feel about JK Dobbins. It's very confusing it even is. last year when he was being productive he it's like he confused us because he looked injured yes <laughs> well he looked half injured because he didn't have a strong leg well no he had a strong yeah leg. He just had one two. really strong leg if we can get two strong legs from Dobbins this year though I think that this early look at running back 19 is going to be too low I, I agree I'm actually really in on Dobbins my best ball leagues so far this offseason I've got a lot the big question with J.K. Dobbins is more Lamar than Dobbins. He's always been a really good running back, really efficient. The issue has been his injuries. He got a, a a bad injury. You know, it wasn't just a simple ACL tear, quick, easy to recover from. This was a more complicated surgery. He comes back, re re injures uh, himself both in like early on, misses weeks one and two, even though he said he was going to be ready, comes back for a short stretch, gets injured. But when he came back at the end with his one strong leg, he was really electric. And another offseason re recovering, being able to work out that weak leg, I do think he's going to be really good for fantasy. Now, he's not a pass catcher, so – you know, usually in fantasy, when you're looking at the best backs, you want someone who's scoring touchdowns and catching the ball. That's not going to be Dobbins, but he's also not going to be drafted like a top 12 guy. He's going to be drafted around running back 20 and probably beat that out. I, I was laughing to myself because his 17 game pace for total receptions on the year for that four game span you talked about where, by the way, he was seven to carry 1600 yards on the ground pace, finished ninth, 18th, 37th and 23rd. His reception total on the year would have been four, yeah. <laughs> four receptions. So you're right. I mean that that's going to lower that that puts him kind of out of at least in my opinion, top twelve range. I don't think top twelve is is a reasonable place for Dobbins to reach. Yeah, that on would, the course that would, of a year. that would be on the basis of him having twelve, thirteen, yeah. fourteen touchdowns, yeah. and you're not going to project that for um uh, you know a back of his size who can be vultured by Lamar himself. Well, they, like I mean, archetype wise, you know. It's he's not that different than Nick Chubb. I mean, the, the four receptions that would be absolutely outrageous. But you do have a new OC in here. You have Todd Monken, more pass heavy. It is what they were likely to be than they were with Greg Roman. So Dobbins, is, I like him in nineteen. Is very interesting 
to me because I I don't know that he would be that different than than Nick Chubb. Uh, I think that's that's giving him pretty high praise for for I, for a few good games. Well, it, but it's not just a few good games. It's the the story of Dobbins is so complicated because he was he was in that crop of like really really good rookie running backs of and was a second round pick had I believe it was the aging out Mark Ingram in front of him took the job kind of over the second half was hitting these huge long touchdowns that didn't seem sustainable and so that was kind of well what do, what do we think about him then he got hurt and he so we deleted that whole second year and this past year was pretty deleted as well so it just it's really hard to gauge who is J.K. Dobbins as a player? Because it's really just one year, and it feels like he's been in the league forever. It's hard because it's it's you have to factor that in. That story, sure. the book of J.K. Dobbins, includes one and a half deleted years. So from a risk perspective, you know, yeah, if, if he's perfectly healthy in the perfect scenario, maybe you get a chub year. Miles Sanders comes in at eighteen, brand new contract, Carolina Panther, Miles Sanders. Uh, there is. I don't, I don't know. I think I like Miles Sanders more than... Like, I, I have Dobbins over Sanders currently. Yeah, I like Miles Sanders' potential this year, and we're going to be adding something brand new to the Ultimate Draft Kit, something that we're titling the Upside Meter, something where we're going... T to, title pending. Title pending. <laughs> we're going to be looking at the potential of players because you have, their, you have rankings based on, you know, stat projections. But certain players have the ability to vastly beat them in the ideal scenario, and certain players don't. They just don't have a real upside case. To me, Miles Sanders has a significant upside case in Carolina. This is a team that, with Deonta Foreman and Chuba Hubbard, ran the ball all over people last year in impressive fashion. I mean, we talk about the season Deonta Foreman had. Miles Sanders is a better runner than Deonta Foreman. And so, to me, this is a player that, coming off an almost 1,300-yard season, getting a big contract, still being at, you know under 26 years old, I think Miles Sanders could could dance with the top 12. I really do. Interesting. I, I don't disagree with you. This is a situation where you, you saw Deonta Foreman once he got involved later in the season because he started kind of as a backup. The last 11 games played, he was on a 17-game pace of 1,355 yards, 300 carry attempt they paid miles a lot of money to come in here and be the dude and i i believe that they will also involve him in the pass passing game far more than he was with the eagles this uh you know they, they've they made a commitment to him financially that you love to see when you're drafting a running back i feel pretty confident that he's going to be the dude here and i know what this team wants to do and they want to run the ball well you, you probably but you have a completely different cast of characters who are in charge now frank reich is the head coach uh thomas brown's the oc it's his, he's the first this is his first time being the, the offensive coordinator i mean he holds you, reich's clipboard then just saying like he's part of it where last year you know it was the, it was the combination of of matt rule matt rule he's doing, <laughs> doing whatever he's doing steve wilkes and then like you guys realize you're praising the ben mcadoo system Right now, we're we're not praising the system. The yes, system was stupid to overrun the ball. What we're praising the, is the offensive. Yeah, line. the offensive line. That's the strength of this team. They're going to have a rookie quarterback yes, that's going to come yes. in, and they've got a great offensive line that can move people. So I just don't see and a good running back now. I don't see a world where they don't where they don't see that as their strength and say, "Oh, we want to win games. We want to protect our rookie quarterback. Let's establish the run." And if that happens. Miles should be pretty good. Well, I think they can win the division. I think that's another story. With a rookie? Yeah. I it's think Carolina, not a great division. I think Carolina can win that division because what you're talking about, Mike, is he, you've got to beat um, Baker Mayfield. The rookie has to beat How Baker dare Mayfield. You? you mean Kyle, Kyle Trask. Trask? You have to beat Derek Carr in the division, yeah. which is – I mean, a lot of people have done that. <laughs> and then um, you've got to beat Desmond Ritter. Like, if Bryce Young is the pick – He's the best quarterback in the division from day one, Ooh, and this is a team. Yeah. And this is a team that was competitive last year, despite the firing of their head coach, despite sending away Christian McCaffrey. I'm very optimistic about the Panthers. I will be placing 
a preseason <laughs> better <laughs> better Ruski on if they take Bryce. If they take somebody else, I'll still probably bet on them. <laughs> Which the line has moved. Bryce Young is currently, according to DraftKings, the favorite to go one on one. Real is switched all yeah. the way to being the favorite. Yep, I've heard that the, there's people in the organization that are pretty convinced that Bryce should be the guy. Wow. James Conner comes in at seventeen. They should listen to my takes because then they go Stroud. Yeah, I, I, my rookie rankings. I know we went over them, but they are right now. They are Young, Richardson, Stroud. But, but NFL wise, who would you? I have would you gone, go Bryce or Stroud. Yeah, I, you wouldn't go. You wouldn't. Go I wouldn't Richardson. go Richardson. No, I, I'm back on the Bryce train. Okay, yeah. I, I would go if I was an NFL GM. I would draft Stroud uh, there, ahead. There you go. Uh, James Conner comes in at 17. We all have them similarly ranked. Mike, you have them the highest in our early, early kind of pretend rankings. Way too early. But last year, I think one of the things you can look at is that 58 targets. I think you could look at from week nine on, he was the running back five in fantasy. We talked a lot about Connor as a value heading into last year. And it looked real shaky it at the beginning. It looked real bad. And and it, it, <laughs> it looked bad. Then he got hurt. And Kyler got hurt, and it was like, oh, well, that was a bad take. No, it wasn't, because then he was great. Yeah, I mean, it was bad for people that had him from weeks yes, two no, to I eight. Know. but The process. But his ability, I think, of what we expected, it wasn't a small run at the end of the year. This was not a J.K. Dobbins four-week span. This was eight weeks in a row for James Conner where he was on pace for James Conner stuff, 1,200 yards, 13 touchdowns, 68 receptions, and he made countless impressive pass catching plays. This was not I just lucked into the checkdowns. This was I made he made plays in the receiving game, which is look right now this is the guy for maybe a lost season in Arizona. You could have check down country. You know, right now the Cardinals, if they start the year without Kyler, it's gonna be uh Colt McCoy and David Blau oh, no. competing. Yeah, James Conner, this this spot at number seventeen here is a placeholder to me. Because if if you go to the season with this depth chart where it's Keontae Ingram behind him and Corey Clement behind him and Kyler is healthy, well, then James Conner is set up to succeed. He's going to be one of the few workhorse running backs on an offense that can score if Kyler's available. Uh, and you could flip that all the way to the Cardinals. I, I've seen a mock draft with them grabbing Jameer Gibbs, which would be ridiculous. But if they did that and be grab fun, yeah, I know I you'd like it, that. Mike. But if they were to grab a day two running back and they don't have Kyler to start, then James Conner is in a timeshare on a bad offense and is bad. So this, really, Conner, to me, is on this show, he's really talented. He can score on the goal line. He can catch the ball. He's everything you want for fantasy. Let's see what his situation he is closer to, to the guy. draft. Yeah, he needs, to, he needs to have the workload to um, – he's not going to be a, a highly efficient – 200 touch player that's good for fantasy he needs to be the dude Aaron Jones comes in at 16 he's 28 years old his best ball ADP is 16 I have him the highest at 15 last year 1100 yards 59 receptions 395 yards ew that's not a lot of receiving yards and five no. touchdowns is that is that true I'm gonna, or is that a, I'm gonna, a typo I'm gonna see if that's a Kyle 395 mistake. receiving yards is correct yeah so I Gross. that's just not a lot um on 59 catches? Let, let's just be clear, though. This was what the, happened? This was the RB9 last year. He's been a top 12 fantasy running back for four straight years. So, coming in at 16, is let me, let me put it this way. Do you believe Aaron Jones has a, a significantly worse floor than 16? Yes. Where? No. Uh, in the 20s. Okay. And, Jason, you said no. You well, think this is a... Ironically, I would say... Uh, you know, I'd say outside of the top 24. Right. I, I think his floor is probably around 24. He's going to be an RB2 next year. He's very talented on a per-touch basis. Can he be a one? I mean, he's you. never not been a one, but I would he's be – He's never not had Aaron Rodgers. I would be surprised without Aaron Rodgers if he is a running back one next season, especially considering the fact that he's not really a touchdown machine. I know he had that year four years ago where he had like 16 rushing touchdowns, but he doesn't project to be that – that seems like the outlier season for him. He had two touchdowns on the ground last year. So he's a good pass-catching back who's talented. I also worry when I draft him 
that it comes in spurts and bunches for him. He has great games and disappears a lot, and that's not the type of running back that I want. I want a little bit more consistent volume-based running back and he's getting older, so I'm I'm not super high on Aaron Jones. I don't sounds like a new candy. Spurts Which, and bunches. Oh, mm. I'd eat it. <laughs> I mean, I could promise that. Is there sugar in it? Yeah, <laughs> mm, that tastes good. <laughs> Mike, do you have anything to add on Jones? Nope, I'm, I'm agree with Jason. David Montgomery at 15. Big contract with the Detroit Lions. Uh, I don't think any of us. I mean, we we're all. I would say fair with this ranking Jason 15 I'm at 16 Mike at 17 uh but I do see significant upside uh the same amount that I see with Miles Sanders probably a little bit more just in the fact that you have an offensive line that's extremely impressive you have a division that they can compete and win just like Miles Sanders and I like running backs on winning teams you have a contract and a commitment to him by the the Lions and we just saw Jamal Williams score a million touchdowns for. And so look, I'm I'm excited genuinely as a fan to see what David Montgomery can do with a good offensive line. He is going from a really bad situation with the offensive line over the last couple of years in Chicago to one of the best in football. So to me, he is another player that can dance inside that top twelve. David Montgomery does not get enough respect for being a really good running back in the NFL. He isn't um, the highlight reel machine, so people don't love him. And I think he was overhyped coming in as a prospect. People loved the prospect and all of a sudden hate the result of what he's been. But he's a, a very solid player. The situation is great. You look at Jamal Williams, and, and these opportunities won't be the same because, you know, people drag down on the one-yard line. But Jamal Williams is gone, and last year he had – 46 carries inside the 10, 34 carries inside the five-yard line. They do not see DeAndre Swift as the goal line back for this team. David Montgomery will get the touchdown opportunities. He can still catch the ball, a good offense. Jared Goff has never been a red zone quarterback. When, when you're there, they know how to score, and it's run the ball because the other team can't stop our offensive line if we've got a good back, and they got a good back in David Montgomery. The the concern for Montgomery is just if the that variance bounces back drastically from what Jamal Williams is the opportunity he had at the goal line, and on top of that you have like he, it, yes it seems like the team is not super into DeAndre Swift, but his Swift's rookie year he touched the ball about thirteen times a game, sixteen times a game the next year and that that plummeted down to ten. If that jumps back into the sixteen. You take away a bunch of touchdown opportunities that Jamal Williams had last year. They're just David Montgomery is very intriguing to me, but I think he also carries a lot of risk. Ramondre Stevenson comes in at fourteen for now. He's twenty five years old, and it is a for now because we don't know what the draft's going to hold for the Patriots. It's Bijan. No, it isn't, Michael. <laughs> That's a nightmare. Yeah, that, were they on the that. bottom, bottom, bottom of your list? They're not on the top, top, top. That's for sure. <laughs> I mean, to me, it, that that would send that would send chills down my spine oh. as a Bijan, uh, you know, the Bijan minute today. Let's get into it. The minute, yeah. Because Ramondre is a please don't be the Patriots. <laughs> Ramondre is a good player. He's a really good player. If the end of the year last year where he fumbled away in my championship was not fun. Sure. But, sure. but the player himself, he runs hard. Um, you know, he caught 69 passes. Nice. <laughs> he finished at 11. So, so yeah, that that's not the best Bijan landing spot. If Bijan is drafted by the Patriots, there is potential that there's seismic activity across the United States. That <laughs> the is, Richter scale? That is measurable. Be, like we, The scientists will see it. and they Will, will say, you stomp your feet? Stomp with me, America. <laughs> I mean, it'll be a problem. But, it, you know, obviously, Bijan can only go to one spot. And if they don't grab Bijan, then uh, there are, you know, the, the, the reports where they would like a blue chip running back in the draft. There aren't many of those guys. There's only one. Well, yeah, I mean, there's only one true blue chipper. Now, I, Gibbs makes sense here. 
Gibbs does. You've got the connection to Alabama. The Patriots love drafting they Alabama do. guys, and they uh, brought in Bill O'Brien uh, back from Alabama. So uh, Gibbs they brought Bill O'Brien back from Alabama. Yeah, we did it. That's a lot of bees. That big old uh, what do you oh the butt chin. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah, I was going to ask you Cleft? what is that? What it is? No, it's a butt chin. Yeah, I mean, if you want to be boring, it's something else. But it's a butt chin because it looks like a little butt. Yes, yeah. that's. That I'm not a, even convinced. That's that. exactly why I call it a butt chin. Yeah. Do Do we know anybody around here with butt chins? I do mean, we good strong? We can't even see the chins in this office. Yeah, yeah, we're all bearded up. Al, do you have a butt chin? I don't think so. I mean, it, and it is. It's funny you call it a butt chin because it's also like connected with like that's like a a, a prince or a right. superhero chin. Yeah. Like that is. That's that why is, I'm trying to remember the real name. But every time I try to think I of it, it was you, cleft. You say butt was, chin. I thought it was cleft. Yeah. yeah. Wait, I'll look it up. Hold on. Clef, Clef Chin? Clef Chin? Something? That sounds right to me, but... Yeah. I think that's good enough for now. <laughs> yeah. All Anyways. Right. But Chin Bill O'Brien <laughs> brought in uh, from Alabama. Gibbs would make sense. The, the draft will come and go, and we will know um, whether or not they invested a second-round pick or a third-round pick or first-round pick on running back. Assuming they don't. Ramondre is very exciting. Well, let me ask the question then for the dynasty players with Ramondre Stevenson. Are you worried enough to trade him? You were. Yes, I, w <laughs> I was. All right, so you're asking our I opinion. was worried enough. Like, I, I, am I don't want to put that. Everyone's going to want to go from here and say, oh, no, what do I do? I, yeah, you don't want to cause like a groundswell of panic, but I would be concerned enough that in the draft, someone's going to come in and the pay. The Patriots just they do what they do for years and years and years, which is look very often they have someone who shows up at the running back position and gives you an insane value. But they also have specialties. They have guys like Ramondre's pass catching. If if they sign Jameer Gibbs, Ramondre's pass catching will evaporate because that will be what Gibbs does for the New England Patriots. Uh dimple so, dimple chin is also what I was thinking. Oh, about. it's a dimple. dimple. It's a big old okay. butt dimple. Usually I mean, no, it's not dimple. a butt dimple. <laughs> That's a butt different dimple. thing. That's a different type of... It's a cleft butt. Um, <laughs> oh, God, it's a, that's, a, that's a crack. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right, Nick Chubb at 13. Oh, man. It was I a, it was a, a, a start of the year that was a yeah. ton of regret for fantasy players that didn't draft Nick Chubb. Yeah, we were on our way to some magic there. I mean, he's he's so good. He's so good. Wizard. Yeah. And something... Kareem Hunt is done. Yep. Something seems to have changed... Yeah, weird. During the year where, like, when I'm looking at his game, he was so good for the first part of the season, and then at the end of the season, he was so bad, and I just can't like put right my around finger week on, 13? Right around week 13. Yeah, it was Voldemort, all right? Yeah. Yeah. Listen, Nick Chubb, I have him at nine. He finished at eight last year. Or, I'm sorry, he finished, where did he finish? He finished five. at five. His basketball ADP is eight. You're crazy to have him at 14. Nick Chubb's going to dominate again this is a 1500 yard runner he's gonna score a bunch he make you know catching 30, 27 passes for nick chubb is fine yeah, that's it's something. fine and kareem hunt's done i mean kareem hunt was an ever-present touchdown vulture threat so he won't be back nick chubb belongs inside the top 10 there is such a strong so please drag his adp down yeah you you you, you talked about i'm a fool for having him at running back 14 um I that's where I would be drafting him. I don't believe he's going to catch enough passes to be relevant and I am not bullish at all on this offense. I think this offense is not going to be uh better or improved. I think it's on the way down. I don't think the Sean Watson is going to have a great season. But that Rum is just rumblings of switching to more pass heavy as that well. That that is just the opinion of one man and you can easily see the world where Look, Deshaun Watson was out of football for a year and a half. He was uh, gone. He comes back, didn't look great, but now he's got the actual offseason with the team off of that season. We've seen him be a top-flight quarterback. There's a reason why he has the most guaranteed money in NFL history. Should he come back to form this season and play well, then you're talking about a really good offense with a really good running back who will have scoring opportunities up the wazoo and that was the issue, right? He didn't score any touchdowns once Deshaun Watson came back. And he didn't score any touchdowns when they came back because they didn't score any touchdowns. Their offense was bad. So really to me, when I'm saying, where, do, do you believe Nick Chubb's going to have a great year or a bad year? 
I feel like that's really tied to what do you believe Deshaun Watson will be this season? Will he get back to form and get it together? Or is this going to be more of a Tiger Woods type situation where when you come back from the 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 public mishap, you just never get back to the the pre uh, to the peak, yeah, to to the form before it. Yeah, I mean, I think we like him because he's the guy, and he's really good. Right, he's same so, reason he's so good. Same reason we would like Connor, even if that offense isn't going to score a lot of points and kind of be not very good. I except Connor catches passes. Right. Yeah, Chubb has been seven, nine, eleven, and five over the last four years. So it will come down to his upside, his potential to be five again or higher. Like Nick Chubb, I will say this. Nick Chubb can finish one. Yes. Nick I, Chubb can finish number one. I would agree with that. If you if you want to tell me that how many running backs could have 20 rushing touchdowns this year. Or run for 2,000 yards. Or run for 2,000 yeah. yards. There's two, three of them? He will be – he's interesting. Now, just talking dynasty real quick because he's on, he's on the Browns this year. He's going to be – the guy, but like, what is the rest of the depth chart currently? Uh, Jerome Ford, mm -hmm. I believe, is like the only, perhaps the only other running back, at least the only running back of note. So they will be on draft watch. You, you'll be if you got Nick Chubb on your Dino team, you're watching them to see if they spend up on a on a a day two running back. But next year, his dead cap dead cap drops to four million, and his cap hit is sixteen point two. So there's a chance that there's a there's a chance that he's not on the team next year, and he's at least he'll be you 28. know at least you know that like Kareem Hunt was great for three years and in, in all those years, Chubb was still good, right? So like I can't see uh, anyone other than Bijan Robinson putting the fear. None of those other guys are going to put the fear in me for this one season. It is ironic if they bring in Jameer Gibbs, yeah, who is awesome, and you, they would probably draft him in the second. I don't know that that has a massively I don't negative effect on Chubb because Chubb wasn't in that role already. They're adding a pass-catching role uh, that could help the offense. So it, he is a little bit situation-proof this year. But, Mike, it's a good point. He could be a cap casualty next season. And he, I mean, he's 27, well, 27 and 100 days, so I don't know what his decimal point that puts him at. But he like he'll be heading into year 29 next year. Travis Etienne. At 12, just 24 years old. Last year was the RB17. Is 12 too high? No. Is 12 too low? No, it's just right. Mm, I mean, it, it feels like <laughs> it feels like I haven't heard a lot about Travis Etienne this offseason, and I don't know why. Because like, the I don't end think of the year was... It was yeah, like, it stunk. Well, it, actually, in the playoffs, funny enough, he was actually fantastic. But you The have NFL that. playoffs. No, the the fantasy, the fantasy playoffs. Fantasy playoffs, weeks 15, he was 22. Then he was running back 15 and running back 5. Uh, what if I wasn't in them because of the preceding weeks? That, uh, that's what happened. You had the rise of Travis Etienne where it seemed like he was going to be this can't-miss week type of guy because every single week he ripped off a 40-plus a yard run that often turned into a touchdown. And then things really fell back to earth. And then he, w then he was okay again. I mean, he's, he's so young and so talented – that I, I think that drafting him as a top 12 running back would be the move. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, you had the head coach come out and say that this is a backfield that you, you need to have multiple backs. You need to be able to keep guys fresh. And that sounded scary. It sounded like they could go into this draft and really spin up. But they went and they signed Dearness Johnson. They've got Jermichael Hasty and Snoop Connor. So if they're saying, hey, th there's, there needs to be three or four guys that can touch the ball, and those are the guys? Going into the season, I'm like, heck yeah, I'm all about Travis Etienne. It was really frustrating when Jamichael Hasty was having games, Hasty, and I needed, Hasty. I needed Travis Etienne to be the guy. So that that was tough, but um, hopefully we don't get thrown in any curveballs by that offense. And they're they're going to develop Trevor Lawrence. This offense is going to be about Trevor Lawrence. That's the objective. So I guess I'm a little nervous. I still think, obviously, we ranked him in the top twelve. But I don't know if I think he can get much higher than 10 to 12. Well, the nice thing is, even though he hasn't been a hyper uh, great pass catcher in the NFL, he hasn't had the targets we want. We do know Which that he weird. has that. Yeah, because he one of the best pass catching backs, or at least most prolific pass catching backs in college with Trevor Lawrence. So we right. know they can utilize him in that way. 
and should they open this offense up more and Trevor Lawrence takes a step forward, you, I think you, you have a case here where Travis Etienne could be a top five running back. Brees Hall comes in at 11, the last name we're going to oh, mention. Man. Shouldn't be on this show. Should be on the tomorrow's yeah. or not tomorrow, the two days show. Yep. Okay. Uh, Jason has him at nine. See? <laughs> <laughs> Mike at 12. I have him at 13. <laughs> the defense rests its case. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that you are saying, I think it might have depended on how we looked at these early ranks because I think that there might be a, a few games where, you know, Brees Hall finishes the season at 11 or 12 instead of at nine. But I think he'll probably, barring a draft surprise, be worthy of, you know, be a, be a top eight type of player over the last three-fourths of the year, I'd say, at this point. So, you know, this is where upside is going to factor in. Even if I think the first couple games for Brees Hall may be protective by the team, right? Like you could have a, a limited touches situation, which look, that might not even matter if he comes out on his three limited touches games and breaks a long run on 12 touches. Well, he's going to finish much higher. Yeah. All you really want if you're drafting him is there's, you know, obviously you got the upside case of you hope he just comes out. He's fully healthy and he dominates from week one. But if, if you're drafting Brees Hall, you're hoping that he doesn't get any kind of injury we we see year one guys come back we, we saw it with Dobbins we we see it, like I pull a hamstring or something because right their body's just not quite ready and, and built up uh from the the pre-ACL injury and then you just got to be patient because when you're drafting him you assume you're going to get off to a slightly slow start and I believe that that will be a very good investment and will be worth it if you have to deal with the first month or two of the season, it's not like he's going to be putrid or bad. Two or, months, that's rough. I mean. Even if it's two months, but that's my point, is I don't think that those two months are going to be crushing your fantasy team even if he's not winning you games. He's going to be a valuable back who catches enough passes, gets the occasional touchdown, is going to be touching the ball 12 to 14 times a game, scoring some points. When he is fully recovered, I mean, we saw it. He was dominating for the Jets. He was, you know, basically a running back two or better every single week after week one until he got injured. So uh, huge breakaway runs in his uh, wheelhouse. He could catch the ball. I mean, obviously, you know that I'm a pro Brees Hall truther. So, um, I mean, he finished at 12 and 19 on weeks where he had seven rushing attempts and eight rushing attempts. So, it's going to be big play opportunities. It's going to be a new offense. And I think that might be, I think the Aaron Rodgers factor will be very interesting. You know, he should, this team should score more points. Mm -hmm. But I, it will be very interesting to see the focal point of the offense. You're going to have prolific wideouts. I mean, Garrett Wilson um, is, is a superstar and didn't have a quarterback to get him the ball the way that he deserved it, and Alan Lazard has arrived. And, and this Alan team Lazard's can make great blocker too. Yeah, yeah they, but so. uh, Devontae Adams uh, has been better than what we project Garrett Wilson to even be with Aaron Rodgers. And you look at every single year, Aaron Jones has been a running back one with Aaron Rodgers. He knows how to dump the ball to running backs in space, get them ahead of steam, hit them in stride. Uh, and how much do you worry about any? Like we ha we kind of have this. Uh, Un, unhuman, inhuman view of injury, right? Where it's like the injury is uh, an ACL and then you do the recovery and then you're back to yourself. Like, is there any risk factors around just not being as good for a while? Yeah, I mean, you, you, you know, you, you've you seen it with lots of running backs. The, like his the, own hesitancy or something. Or absolutely. The, the article that I referred to earlier that Matthew Betts did, it showed that on average running backs are worse in year one re from the ACL. They are less efficient, less productive, less work, Don't and then the following season, they are much better. So if you want to wait and say, you know what? He's a human being coming off of an ACL injury. I don't care if he's young and talented. I'm not going to spend because it's going to cost you in the draft. Yes. He's going to be a second-round pick. Running back seven currently in best ball. 
yeah, I was going to say two, three turn, but running back seven won't even make it to the two, three turn. You're, you're investing probably middle of the second, uh, round on that draft capital. And you've got to, if you want to say, you know, I don't want the risk and there's no reason to take that. There's other good running backs there. I don't blame you. Then bet on him in 2024. It's not going to be my strategy. I will be betting on him now, but uh, there is absolutely a world where he's just more hesitant and weaker in that leg. Be interesting because of the draft capital when you're going into a, a redraft season and saying, you know, you're going to have to draft him and you're going to have to play him right away. You're not going to have that choice if you make that redraft pick. But he's a superstar. Yep. I mean, Brees Hall in this offense with, you know, how, what do you stop? I mean, the, the Jets should have a very good year with Aaron Rodgers. They yes, really they should. should. Their defense is, is, is awesome. So, also, can we just get that trade done? What is happening? Well, they say they say he's going to be there. Yeah, everyone what is, does. That's what's so funny about this situation. The Jets are like, yeah, he'll be there. The Packers are like, yeah, he'll be there. Aaron Rodgers is like, yeah, I'll be there. Just but, but you're not there. It's just draft do it. related. It's draft or timing around the draft know. day trade situation. It's, it's weird. All right, that Get is it, it. That is it for the top uh, or for the beginning of our countdown. Twenty to eleven Thursday show. We'll be going through the top ten, counting them down. More discussions, more debates, and uh, I think some of the more interesting things today was just like which players have. You know, to look over their shoulder a little bit. Yeah, who are you holding your breath on? Yeah, at the end of April. Yeah, it it's uh it's one of those things where like maybe it's because in recent years I've had those dynasty. We talked about it those those dynasty players that are deleted by the draft or or their value that you could have traded them for last year just goes to twenty mm -hmm. percent. It'll be it'll be an interesting thing to to pay attention to. Check out the Ultimate Draft Kit Plus at ultimatedraftkit.com dot com with the Dynasty Pass. Dig into some of these rookies. Uh, our rankings are, are being tweaked and modified every day as we get more information. Uh, you heard Mike talk about the betting line. C.J. Stroud was the favorite, no longer the favorite to go number one. The implications, you know, there's a trickle-down effect there too of who these guys are throwing to. I mean, Anthony Richardson climbing up people's boards. Six teams rumored to trade for the number three pick with Arizona. So you could see... Three rookie quarterbacks, one, two, three. Big long-term implications for fantasy. So that'll do it for today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers. Thank you for tuning in. Talk to you later. <laughs> Not now. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.